Hello everyone and welcome back to Garibaldi Red, a Nottingham Forest podcast brought to you by Nottinghamshire Life. I'm Max Sage, your host, and today, bright and early this morning, joined by fellow broadcaster for TalkSport and Forest fan, Max Scott. Max, good to see you, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks Max, I'm doing well. Um, there's a little bit of a dark cloud, I think, over Forest at the minute with the with the FFP stuff, and so that's sort of lingering in the background, but yeah, I'm doing well. Something slightly different for today's podcast. Uh, we'll be discussing Nuno's to-do list, in our opinion, uh, and diving into really what you should be doing around the club at the moment. Uh, as ever, if you do enjoy the podcast, remember to drop us a review. Uh, you can like and share across Spotify and uh, all your usual podcast platforms. Uh, Max, I suppose then, let's begin. Um, before we before we delve into this to-do list, we were just touching there before we started recording this about the FFP and about Forest at the moment. It's been a while since we catched up and, and you've been on the podcast. What have you actually made to, to Nuno start and then the Brentford game and, and just generally overall for Forest at the minute? I was very much in the camp that I didn't think at the time sacking Steve Cooper was the right thing for the club. Um, I don't think it was right for, you know, talk about the soul of the club and how, and the feeling around the city. But I cannot blame Nuno for that. Um, and, and it's absolutely the right thing to get behind Nuno. And I think we've been in every single game we've played. You know, regardless of my thoughts on Steve Cooper, we weren't playing well. It was incredibly poor. Um, and it looked like one-way traffic in terms of where we were going in the league. So, you know, he's beaten Newcastle and Man United back-to-back. An awful refereeing decision changed the complex of the game against Bournemouth, which I think we could have taken something from if we'd have had 11 men. Um, and then we'll get into some of the, the issues with the Brentford game. But ultimately, we, we were competitive despite playing against a side that lost their previous six games. We look like we can score goals and we look at, you know, that, that there's something a bit about us. And so I think Nuno's got off to a pretty good start. He's been dealt a really difficult hand uh, in terms of the FFP situation and what that does um, to what, you know, the limits that we have in the transfer window. But, you know, I think, you know, Nuno's done done pretty well considering the circumstances. And I suppose, Max, that leads us quite nicely uh, onto our first point uh, on this to-do list, which is about committing to a back five. You see the chopping, the changing constantly. And that's not just in the defensive line for Forrest. That's in other areas of the pitch. But Nuno's really got to say, this is the defensive, you know, players we're going to play every week. And the same with midfield, the same with attack, which I'm sure will come on come on to and, and this is who is going to be my Forest start 11 similar to Cooper I suppose in the championship and the latter stages yeah. of last season yeah 100% I mean again like I mentioned Nuno's had a he's he's picked up this squad where two of our centre-backs have been frozen out in Joe Worrell and Scott McKenna um, where six seven eight players have gone off to AFCON um, he's had to give a debut to a, a player that has never played for us and so and again, I'm not blaming Nuno, but we look incredibly vulnerable at the back, both from set pieces and in open play. Um, and there needs to just be a consistent back four or, you know, back five. It would be, be something that I'd, I'd prefer just to solidify things. Um, the big question for me, though, Max, is around Nuno, excuse me, Nuno Tavares. I cannot fathom why he suddenly got um, a place in the starting eleven for the past couple of games. Um, I don't think that he's worth it. I'd prefer him to to go back to to Arsenal. I feel quite strongly um, about that, and I think that Harry Toffolo has sort of shown himself to be a player that um, can can kick it with the big boys in the Premier League. He's got he's got a few assists this season. He scored his first goal, um, and the thing about Harry Toffolo is that he he plays. I think he represents fans on the pitch. He plays with that sort of passion that Forest fans love to see particularly at home, where, where he, I think he contributes to creating that atmosphere, you know, that this is this is home court and you're not coming here, um, you're not coming here without a fight sort of thing. And so I'd love to see Harry Toffolo come back into the side um, and, you know, ultimately be a part of a much more consistent defensive lineup because that's what we need. Because despite the fact that we're scoring goals, we, we just look really vulnerable and weak at the back. Yeah, we do. And I suppose two key players that, that haven't been talked about a lot, Max, given the controversy off the pitch that, that particularly Joe Worrell has, has, has found himself in, is Joe Worrell and Scott McKenna. There's rumours that, that, that Worrell will depart the club towards the end of this January window. Yeah. But can you see any way back for those two? Because they were they were kind of an instrumental part in last season's plans, really. Um, they were instrumental. They were instrumental in our promotion, and Forest fans shouldn't forget that. 
bit of a side note, I, I'm baffled by the abuse that Joe Worrell gets uh, in the dark corners of the internet. Um, I think that it's really poor form. Uh, he he loves the club, and there may, you know, there may have been friction between him and Cooper. Fans might be unhappy with some of the things that they think that he said, uh, but, but I think that he deserves a, a boatload of respect from Forest fans, and I do think that he's capable playing uh, surrounded by the right people to play for Premier League Forest. Um, you know, next to Murillo and perhaps sort of flanked by um, Nia Carte as well. They've both got pace. I certainly think Worrell is capable. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not necessarily a hill that I'm willing to die on. We've got loads of choices. And what I want Nuno to do is to make a decision when the boys are back from AFCON on what that defensive line looks like. So I would say that uh, particularly Worrell is capable enough of, of coming back into the, the side. But the things that I'm hearing um, and the feeling that I get is that he probably won't. You're right. The kind of on online abuse surprised me as well, given that, that the player has done so much for the club. But I suppose when you look at him technically sometimes, Max, on the pitch, he, he does tend to make a lot of mistakes, like a lot of footballers do and, and like a lot of players in this Forest side. But it seems like we're, uh, we, you know, the, the media in, perhaps are always talking about Joe Worrell mistakes. And I suppose you can understand that that gets onto the terraces and the fans seem to not turn on him as such, but there's a large proportion, I think, of the fan base that that would be happy to see Joe Worrell leave this window. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm not part of that 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 group of fans, um, and you know, it, you know, we've all got opinions. It's, it's absolutely fine if they think that. You know, I'm I'm not saying that he's um, you know, he's the best centre back in the league by any stretch of the imagination. He has made mistakes, but I, I think that he's just maybe got the brunt of the attention from fans, from media. Um, like I say, I think that he's good enough to play in the Premier League and it's all about who he's with. But it would seem that Nuno doesn't think that because, you know, he, he hasn't started him in the second leg against Blackpool. He hasn't started him against Brentford. Um, and so it, I think it's going to be an unfortunate farewell. And I think that'll be the same for Joe because things have turned sour for him. Um, and it's probably right that he gets a fresh start somewhere else. I'd hate to see him sign for someone like Leicester. Um, even someone like Sheffield United, you know, we've got a real strong rivalry, I think, with them, even though they're across the Yorkshire border. Um, but if he does, you know, fair play to him and I hope that he does well. Let's touch more on this to-do list that we've put together. Another two massively influential players for Forest and key players, Morgan Gibbs-White and Taiwo. Uh, you touched on Max as well when we kind of put this list together. It's the first time the kind of Morgan's played in this central central attacking midfield role and, and obviously Taiwo up front. How vital do you think that partnership could be? And, and also for Nuno, his job in a way is when Taiwo comes back and, and he's fully fit, to probably slot him straight back into the starting eleven. I think you've got to, Max. Uh, for me, I think this is a perfect storm and I get excited by it. Morgan Gibbs-White's playing his, despite his abdominal injury, he's playing his best football in a Forest shirt. He's playing in the right position. He's absolutely been instrumental in sort of our victories over City and United, without which we'd, we'd be looking prime for relegation. And so, I, I just, like I said, I think it's a perfect storm because then Tywo's coming back, but he's really for the first time playing with Morgan Gibbs-White, not only in that form, but in the right position. Um, and with Alanga clearly sort of um, showing himself to be a really important player for Forrest on the counter-attack with his goals and his assists, I really think that that sort of partnership and, you know, that trio with Alanga could be the thing that separates us from relegation. You know, again, we don't know what's going to happen with the profitability and sustainability charges. It looks like it's going to be points, minimum six, but if Everton get that, I think it's going to be a sort of a two-horse race between us and Everton. And the the Morgan Gibbs White Tywo combination, I think, is better than what Everton have got, and will be absolutely uh, crucial in picking up points and 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 seeing us sort of steer clear of relegation. So I'm really excited for Tywo to be back because. He's just an absolute threat, isn't he? He's an absolute nuisance. No one wants to defend against him. He's all elbows. He's awkward. He's quick when he's fit. Um, he's incredibly strong and he's in the right place at the right time. And then I guess the cherry on top and the bonus of that is that Chris Wood is also scoring goals. Um, say what you want about Chris Wood. Say what you want about the ridiculous deal that we gave this man. Um, you know, Newcastle were absolutely laughing when, um, when, when we structured that deal. But... 
He scored a hat trick against Newcastle. He's looking dangerous. Uh, you know, scored against Brentford. And like we, I think we said off air, Max, you said, you know, he's playing in the right position. He's right on that last man, being a bit of a nuisance. And so, all of that said, I think we've got um, a front line and attacking setup capable of scoring goals. If we can get the defensive stuff right, you know, pick your defence, Nuno. Tell us who you want. Then I, I think we're a, you know, we're a decent Premier League side. Yeah, uh, six goals in, in in six games for Chris Wood. That includes one assist. We touched on it in the last Garibaldi Red um, podcast, actually. And Robbie Earnshaw talked about him and, and and almost this competition, I suppose, now maybe between him and Taiwo. Do you think it will be an easy decision to slot Taiwo in? Of course, you make some really good points there about him. But in the same sense, don't fix what's not broken. And, and maybe Chris Wood, you might see him kind yeah, of yeah. starting and, and, and Taiwo on the bench for the first few games when Taiwo's fully fit. Yeah, no, I, when I've thought about it, I got a little bit excited then. I think what we don't want to do is we don't want uh, Taiwo to come back and get injured straight away. There's there's clearly issues there around him him keeping fit and with Chris Wood playing well and scoring goals it would be unwise to to bench him um and 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 just throw Taiwo in there I think Taiwo is a, an absolutely fabulous player to bring in off the bench and so I would I'd suspect that Nuno will do that for the first few games until he the physios the fitness coaches are absolutely sure that he can play 90 minutes but then like like say it'd be the first time we've got two strikers that can score goals you know since we've been in the Premier League and so um, long may that continue. Next thing on the list that that we put, and, and I suppose it's probably the biggest one on Forest fans' lips at the minute, is to sort the goalkeeper situation out. And I can see you kind of put your ha- kind of head in your hands there, Max. And it's such a an, an interesting topic because Matt Turner and then Vlakadimos and and constantly this chopping and changing of of, of keepers. I I think this is the most important on Nuno's to do list, and and which will possibly points deduction dependent, keep Forrest in the Premier League this season, is to sort a goalkeeper. Do you agree? Oh, Max, I mean, I don't know where, I don't know where to start on this, mate. <laughs> I don't, I, I, how much have we spent on goalkeepers? I mean, not, I not just... about 20, 30 million on Turner and Vlacadimos. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm sorry to go there. If we've spent 30 million on these two goalkeepers, you know, say what you want about the Premier League rules, you know, essentially the profitability and sustainability rules, punishing Forrest for wanting to make a profit on Brennan Johnson. You know, I, I agree with that. I think that they're out of date and that needs changing. But if you're spending 30 million quid on those two goalkeepers, you know, I think it just, it's symptomatic and it shows the scattergun transfer strategy that this club has and they need to be responsible and accountable for that you know it's great we've got an owner that's investing it's great we've got an owner that wants to take us back to the big time i'm not criticizing those expectations but if those expectations aren't matched with a realistic clear well thought out strategy and results in spending 30 million quid on two bang average goalkeepers then questions need to be asked so Yes, Max, we need to sort the goalkeeping situation out. I've been incredibly patient with Matt Turner because I think at times he's looked good. At times he's made some really good saves. I like that he tries to distribute the ball quickly um, and and get that counter-attack moving, which Forrest have been so successful at. But I'm sorry, all this lark about writing to the PGMOL about Ivan Tony and that free kick. That If Morgan Gibbs-White did that, we would love it. Football's a competitive game and sometimes you you push those... push. You know, you push the boundaries to try to get an advantage. So, say what you want about Ivan Tony and Brentford's embarrassing sort of welcoming home of this player that clearly wants to leave. That goal would have been avoided if Matt Turner listened to Ryan Yates about the wall and, and didn't stand basically on, on the post at the right-hand side. I mean, every, every, I'm, I'm not a goalkeeper. I'm a bang average amateur footballer. But even watching that on the screen... Screaming at the screen, the screen in the pub, Max. Why are you stood so far over there? Look, you know, it's it, it, it didn't need a Roberto Carlos sort of ninety degree um, sort of bend on the ball. It just sort of side footed it round a really poorly placed wall. So I, I'm clearly ranting. We need to sort the goalkeeper situation out. What do we do? Do we go? Do we buy someone? You know, have three goalkeepers, fifty million quid or whatever. I think we need to look in the loan market for somebody, but it's difficult then because you're adding to the wage bill. You you know, the the environment in the dressing room is maybe disrupted because both of these keepers aren't going to be playing. 
So I think maybe there's an argument that you try and, you know, you stick with them and hope that these little mistakes um, stop. But it's, you know, it's a really, it's not a good situation to be in when you're fighting at the bottom of the league. If I had to ask you, uh, Max, who would you choose between the two? If 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 you're going to have a consistent goalkeeper every single week, is it Turner or is it Vladimir in your opinion? Well, the, the phrase, it's like choosing who, who's going to sort of sleep with my wife comes to mind. <laughs> um, and I can't can't credit that. I think I heard Gary Neville say that or Jamie Carragher. But um, I, I would choose Matt Turner. You know, don't ask me why. Um, but I, I just think that, I think Vlad... Vlad, is it Vladichimos? Vladimir. Well, Vlad uh, yeah. I mean, there's there's t- there's tons of pronunciations okay. for. Yeah, well, I do. I I heard, apologies for I not heard. knowing that. But he, he, I think he looks a little bit. He doesn't look good, sort of, um, at the corner under the ball. I'm not saying Matt Turner looks sort of like prime Manuel Neuer, but I think that he's he's better in that um, area. I, again, I like the fact that he's trying to distribute the ball quickly, um, and so there's clearly. I don't want to be too harsh. There's clearly um, attributes of a good goalkeeper there, but it's just too inconsistent and, and haphazard at the top at the, at the top flight. So, um, yeah, I'd say stick with Turner if we're not going to invest. And whether we can invest because of what's going on with the financial stuff is another question. So, yeah, I would stick with... What about you? you um, I, yeah. Mm, yes, I would. I watched... Like a Demos play in the Blackpool game, and again, I just thought there were so many silly errors. I actually think Turner's shot stopping is probably one of his best parts of his game. Yeah. It's, it's, it's distribution that lets him down, and there seems to be this real lack of communication between him, him and the defensive line. Yeah. And we touched on earlier there, Max, about sticking to this back five, which would probably help the goalkeeper in the long run. But it's that trust, isn't it, between the players? And the goalkeeper, and there just yeah. doesn't seem to be the trust there. There's more of a trust, I think, with Turner, though. So so I I would agree. And, and that if Forrest aren't going to go and spend money this window, there's a week left of it, less than that, then, then to stick with Matt Turner, really. Yeah. Um, I just think it's such a, a such a difficult situation. And someone said to me, actually, the other day, a fan stood in the away and that if we don't sort the goalkeeper situation, we're going to get relegated. I thought, well, it's probably not as drastic as that. But it's a very good point that that if you're having a goalkeeper that makes silly errors every game and he's costing Forest goals like the Tony free kick and the, like the Man United goal that, 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 that Turner kind of does that awful mm-hmm. clearance for, then you're going to be in trouble. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. It, 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 I, suppose, I, I suppose it's going to be difficult with as you mentioned there, the, the profit and sustainability rules and all of the charges that we find ourselves in. Um, I suppose fourth fourth point on this to-do list then, Max, which is very similar to this committing to a back five, yeah. is deciding on a midfield three. We touched on, um, before we came and recorded this, about Mangala and, and his most yeah. likely departure from the club, mm. um, which I think has shocked many people. I, I think I think Mangala's a, a, a very... I won't say crucial player for Forrest, but he's certainly someone that can add something a bit different creatively and, and attackingly. Um, so I suppose that leads us to the question of how important a player like Ryan Yates will probably be um, and who the midfield three will be if Mangala goes. Yeah, on Mangala, it's a strange one. I think he's been one of our most consistent and and one of our best players this season. Um I think that he's a really quality player um, and I, I'm quite sad to see him go really. Obviously, he's not Nuno's, um, he's not Nuno's tipple, is he? I think he, Nuno prefer, prefers Danilo and Sangari in there, who I think have been um, pretty good. Uh, and hopefully, you know, selling him with a sort of loan to buy helps us financially as well. So I can see that. I just It just sort of came out of nowhere for me. So without Mangala, I mean, Max, you know me, I am firmly in the... Ryan Yates' is Lord Club. I mean, I absolutely adore this man. I think he has proven time and time again that he's a Premier League player, that he's crucial to Forrest. I can't remember what the stats are, but it, the, the, you know our win percentage with Ryan Yates is much higher. I love his aggression, um, and I, I think Nuno can see that. So for me, Ryan Yates, um, not that he's the best player on the pitch, but for me, he's the first one of the first names on the team sheet. Um, and I think then, despite his inconsistency, um, Sangare is probably going to be someone that Nuno um, looks to because he, he's done that before he went off to Afghan. He's clearly a great player, but I th- for me, I've sometimes had questions of how much do you want this, mate? You know, come on, 
but he's clearly he's had some some great moments, some great periods in games, and so I'd love to see him playing consistently and not picking up silly yellow cards like like he did in the first half of the season, and to really sort of build up the gears a little bit and move up the gears rather, because I think he can be a great player. And then I think that Danilo, um, you know, he's just started scoring. We love to see that celebration. Um, I think it, for me that is the midfield three at the minute. Uh, that's that's what I'd say. Do you think anyone challenges that Yates, Sangare, and Danilo? Uh, no, I think I think I think if Mangala goes, I think that will be probably be Nuno's. I can imagine if we're trying to predict Nuno in a way, then yeah. that will probably be be his his midfield three. Um, and I totally agree about Ryan Yates. Max I think he's someone that that is so him so important to the side and. I just don't know. I, I think when when we talk about players like Harry Toffolo earlier and, and players that yeah. really want to play for the club and, and fight, yeah. and that's probably what kept Forrest up and, and, and grinded Forrest out results last season was that Cooper managed to create this culture around the dressing room, this culture of, you know, we're going to go out there and we're going to give absolutely everything. And, and Nuno's even touched on on creating that and, and continuing it in a way. Yeah. But given the amount of signings, given the amount of new players that potentially, it's an interesting point, but potentially don't know what it meant to the football club to get promoted originally and that they've slotted into a Premier League side straight away, then they need to understand still the importance of the club and the importance of the fans and, and, yeah, and the history. Absolutely. And I think that's really important. So players like Ryan Yates that have grown up through the academy, that have been really, really in the the, the, the rubbish in the championship and then they get us promoted and, and survive relegation last season. They're players that I think you really want to be in the starting eleven and, and definitely round the dressing room for sure. I suppose which leads us nicely, Max, onto our fifth um, and maybe final point. Kind of got a few more to touch on on Nuno's to-do list. Almost recreate the fortress atmosphere created by Cooper. And I suppose this is probably Nuno's greatest challenge to continue what Steve Cooper did and the connection with the fans and building that relationship at the city ground. That's yeah. really, really important. Nuno is never going to be Steve Cooper. No, no one can replace Cooper in, in terms of his position now in Forest history. But um, he's absolutely right to... He's saying all the right things about the fans, isn't he, and about the atmosphere. But going to the games, there there has been, I think, a drop this season uh, in just in terms of the atmosphere. I think it's partly to do with what we're seeing on the pitch. But Forest fans are just so willing and able to get behind the, the the team at any given opportunity and so it starts on the pitch doesn't it and and you know beating Man United at home I mean I wasn't at the game and um, I was working but I was told that it was just electric and that's that's what we need again but you you only get that creating that fortress atmosphere by being a difficult team to play against by not conceding silly goals which we've done recently and so I do think everything that we've said about consistency, about being more solid, about having a clear identity, that all then contributes to creating an environment at, at home games where it is a fortress because um, we're difficult to break down, we're awkward to play against. So playing the likes for me of Toffolo and Yatesy in there that have that bit of needle and that bit of passion, Morgan Gibbs-White feels like one of our own. He feels like he's come through the academy because of the connection we've got and the sort of determination he plays with and so I'm not saying it's not there I'm not saying the atmosphere has been poor but there's definitely been a, a shift I think this season and um, if we can get that right then um, I think we're halfway to to staying up and whatever points deductions we may get I think that we can overturn that if we um, sort of create that environment that we're, we're talking about and that we know that can exist at the club. Final point for me, Max, on this to-do list, I'm, I'm going to throw it in there, is I suppose when we go back to talking about players, is to play to players' strengths. You see the likes of Morgan playing in the middle, how well he's performed since New yeah. coming in. We touch on there, Chris Wood just being on that last man, being almost that kind of offside trap. And yes, every Chris Wood goal may go to VAR and they have to draw the lines and do it on crosshairs and <laughs> whatever it may be. But... If you play, I think, to play his strengths, which Nuno's done a good job of doing so yeah. far, yeah. then that 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 ultimately creates that winning mentality eventually. Yeah, I think you've just you've nailed it really. And I think Nuno deserves so much credit and, and praise for coming in in an incredibly difficult job. 
you know, off the back of Steve Cooper, who is adored. Then a few weeks later, we have these charges against us. I think Nuno's been incredibly poised and is doing the right thing on the pitch. You know, even though there are clearly some some issues that we've discussed, he is doing what you've just said. He's playing to people's strengths. He's not complicating it, which I think maybe Steve Cooper fell into the trap of trying to build a little bit too quickly, this new identity. So I think Nuno deserves a, a, a boatload of praise for that. You know, we've seen it with with Chris Wood. We've seen it with Morgan Gibbs-White. We've seen it with the way that um, he's playing Murillo. I think that there's so many reasons to be hopeful. It's difficult at the minute with everything that's going on. Um, but that, that'll be massive, just sort of keeping things simple um, and picking up points wherever we can, right? Yeah, exactly that. And I suppose that leads us nicely. I will add it into our seventh and final point on Nuno's to-do list, which is keep doing what you're doing. Great start. Yeah. Let's let's keep it going, Max. Yeah, and and you know I think it's important to say that our attitude here isn't oh this is you know Nuno Nuno needs to do this. I think you know we're very much of the of the opinion that he's coming and he's done a really good job with, with a difficult in a difficult situation and things are looking good. Um, I'm sure that he 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 knows well. I'm sure he definitely has much better of an idea about what the club needs. Um, I'd like to think that the things that we've been saying are probably there or thereabouts in terms of what we do need. We need consistency um, and, and solidity. And I think that that will come. But, you know, I think he deserves, like I say, loads of credit for what he's done. Uh, no football this weekend, Max. So enjoy whatever you're doing. Thanks for your time today. Really appreciate you coming on again. No, it's been great, Max. Thanks a lot. As always, if you do enjoy this episode, remember to drop us a like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us across Spotify, Apple Podcasts, leave us reviews. If you do enjoy them and if you are at a loose end, I've just said no football this weekend. I've just completely forgot Bristol City on Friday night. Um, and Sarah Clapson does a brilliant preview of that uh, where she answers your questions. Uh, you can listen to that exclusively on audio platforms. And on Saturday, because there'll be no football after the Bristol City game that weekend until Arsenal on the Tuesday night. If you're at a loose end, we highly recommend the Mark Warburton interview. Uh, he reveals all on Garibaldi Red and talks about his time working under Marinakis and the controversy surrounding his sacking. So highly recommend that. We will see you next Tuesday, uh, next Monday, I should say, for our main episode before the Arsenal game. Too many days. Uh, and yeah, um, if you've enjoyed this, remember to drop a like, share and subscribe. We will see you very soon. Thanks for tuning in to Gamma Bowling Red. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.